Hello, I'm Dr. Heath Van Horn, and I'm your instructor this semester. I just wanted to introduce myself so that way you have a better understanding of my history, and maybe you might have some questions for me. A few years ago, a student of mine told me that I have more degrees than a thermometer. I've been using his material ever since. Thanks, James. I started off like a lot of you. I got my associate degrees first uh, until I figured out what kind of major I wanted to pursue. So I pursued a major in computer science because I thought it was easy than liberal arts. I really enjoyed the math. I then got a master's in computer science and a master's in information resource management. Uh, the information resource management degree is like an interpreter degree. It is half business, half math so therefore I can talk tech with a geek and I can talk eloquently in the boardroom. I finished off my career path with a PhD in information technology. I like to get my hands dirty in the electronics and the programming and the information technology degree allowed me to do that whereas the math is almost um, all theoretical. I do have a couple publications out there the first one is not very interesting, and it is available on uh, Amazon. Do not buy it. I will give you a copy for free if you're at all interested in the balance of leadership, management, and technical skills in different levels of, of uh, authority within an organization. The second one is way too complicated for most people to understand. I am working on turning it into a book in layman's terms so that way more people could understand the theory that I discovered. I love hanging out with hackers and I love trying to understand what makes them tick. I grew up in a small town of 350 people. People think I joke when I say that the town only has two streets. I know my wife did. When we visited my, my mother on uh, Christmas one year, uh, I offered to take her on a tour of the town, and she was uh, amazed that I was serious, that the town really only has two streets. So it was quite an adventure for me for leaving my hometown and joining the military. The only reason I joined the Air Force is because my father said, join the Air Force, they have better food. Um, best decision I ever made. I spent 23 years in the military before medical made me retire. I got to go to a lot of different places. Um, I've lived in, I don't know how many states now. Uh, I lived in England for 10 years, Iraq for a year. So I've got to travel the world pretty good. And when I retired, um, there was we were in another small town of 10,000 people and they did not have a need for a hacker like me to start a business. So what I did was I started a different kind of business. I started selling sheds. I started the business for $473. At the end of four years, I got to use all of my IT skills to try to uh, build the business. And at the end of four years, that business was generating a million dollars a year in income. So that was a pretty good big deal. The problem is I don't like being a businessman. I like IT. I like focusing on IT. I hate marketing and accounting and all those other things that go with being a businessman. And it just wasn't my thing. So when this opportunity to come here and teach, uh, I seized it as quickly as I could. And so here I am. I started off uh, in the IT world by repairing vacuum tube equipment. So vacuum tubes, if you're not familiar with, are ancient technology from 30s and 40s and 50s. This, this piece of equipment is from the 50s. It was still being used as of 2002, I believe. Uh, it Just because it's old doesn't mean it's bad. It was one of the few pieces of equipment that would survive a nuclear blast because it is vacuum tube. So it was quite interesting to learn that sort of uh, technology. Then I moved into solid state electronics, uh, IC chips, uh, resistors, capacitors. Uh, the theory behind electronics is still the same. It hasn't changed. It's, uh, it's physics. So um, whether you're working on a vacuum tube or an IC chip, 
theory is, is exactly the same, how that device works. Uh, the only difference is, is it's smaller and it might be packaged differently. So it, that was kind of a good step up. I got into computers through this system here. The system was developed in the late 70s, and it also was decommissioned just 20 years later. Um, it broke a lot. And one of the things that we had a hard time with was an EEPROM chip. Don't get, don't wrap your head around that. It, it was a chip that had to be set by the factory. We knew how to reset the chip, but we didn't know how to program it. So one of the things that I did was I figured out how to get a rudimentary computer to program the chip. It was amazing. It was awesome. Um, that's when I really started to get a, a feel for computers. I also, at the same time, love playing video games. I still love playing video games. Um, but at this time, you know, I wasn't married. I didn't have kids. And I got to beta test a lot of the flight simulators that existed in the uh, mid to late 90s. I got to travel all over Europe on somebody else's dime. I got to go to Germany and Spain and uh, all over England. Um, just to play video games and tell the companies how effective their video games were. Uh, it, was, it was a blast. I got to hang out with some friends. I got to meet people all over the world. Um, and uh, we really got to help develop uh, video games to a whole new level back in the day. When I left England, I became an officer, and uh, one of the first things I had to do as an officer was program uh, our nation's nuclear forces communication system. And so this is an accurate picture of what the system still looks like. Um, it is old, but old doesn't mean bad. It is very reliable. It gets the message through 99.98% .98 of the time, which is much better than some of the other delivery methods. So we had to do a lot of computer programming to make the adjustments needed to the system because there was no dynamic patching. Everything is still on 8-inch floppies. So we had to figure out how to write the program to do the updates. And the thing is, there was only four programmers that knew how to write in Assembler, but I happened to be an Assembler programmer from college, and I was able to pick it up pretty well. And their first task for me was not just to write code to make this program work, but to teach uh, about 30 other programmers that learn nothing but JavaScript as their code and to teach them assembler so that way they could write code on this system as well. So that was a lot of fun. That's why I first started hanging out with a lot of fellow geeks, a lot of computer kids, and uh, it's amazing uh, what they can accomplish when they want to. I also get to do a lot of things as an officer. Uh, I worked with hackers, I've worked with programmers, uh, I've worked with the cable dogs, those are the guys that run the cable all over the building, uh, across the base, or even uh, across town, it depended on what our needs were. Satellite communications, yes, I can calculate the thermal noise floor temperature that is required before your signal will fade off uh, from a satellite that's 18 miles in the air. Um, that was interesting. So satellite links are kind of interesting. I don't prefer them. Uh, there's, a, there's a lot of math there, so that's interesting. But the reliability is somewhat shaky still. HF, UHF, and VHF, those are telestial signals. Anything that transmits a signal or receives a signal, I've worked on. And it, to me, just that uh, propagation of radiation of information is pretty interesting to me. I love figuring out ways to intercept it and to disrupt it. Telephone, uh, plain old telephone service. There's a lot of copper in the ground. I know most people don't see landlines anymore, but that is a very uh, interesting field of study. It is one of the very first things that hackers got into uh, when hacking first started back in the 70s, and they called them phone freakers. And uh, it was quite the great um, technology. It's awesome. Air traffic control, that's always a good thing. This is a picture of my last squadron that I was with. I was not in the picture, so don't look for me, because I was the one taking the picture. So this was our squadron, and what it was was our squadron was 350 people, and our job was to go anywhere in the world within 48 hours, 
bringing 50 vehicles with us, carrying the radar equipment, the air traffic control towers, uh, beds, medical, food, any logistics, gas, generators, all these things. So that way we could set up air traffic control anywhere in the world within 48 hours. And that was a blast. That was really good. We got to go to some not so cool places, but the mission itself was really um, uh, quite interesting. And LMR, Land Mobile Radio, uh, that's something that's inherent in everything that the military does. Uh, it's very important in large organizations. Uh, it's just a fancy word of saying walkie-talkies. Some walkie-talkies are more expensive than the latest smartphone, just because of the security that's involved. I'm a major IT geek. I am still very much an IT geek. Here's a uh, you'll see a joke here on the screen on the t-shirt. It is the best joke. I think it's hilarious. Some of you will chuckle. Some of you will be confused, but hopefully by the time we get to the end of the class, you'll understand it more wholly. I do every spring. I participate in hacking contests. There is the intercollegiate um, cyber defense uh, competition that happens every year. I help with the semifinals. Um, on the north, and now that I'm in the in New York, I help on the northeast side of the semifinals. Uh, I used to do um, the West Coast. I used to be a red hacker. Uh, I would compete, or I would challenge uh, students like you that were tasked with defending a network and keeping it operational, while guys like me were attacking the network and trying to bring it down. It was a lot. It's 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 a lot of fun. You get to do a lot of things in that controlled environment that you can't do in real life. Otherwise, you go to jail. So we got to have a lot of fun with the college students. Uh, unfortunately, we did make one cry. Um, we took over his DNS server, and DNS is just a fancy way of saying when you type in Google.com, the computer doesn't understand what that means, and so it asks something called the DNS what google.com means and that dns responds with well that means 8.8.8.8 and therefore now the web browser knows where to send you which is 8.8.8.8 is google so the thing is we i took over that and i directed every web page request that he put in there it doesn't matter if it was cnn or cisco.com or microsoft.com or hotmail.com or gmail.com it didn't matter what it was that would always take him to the Justin Bieber fan page. And after about an hour of this, the guy started crying. So the referees called us up and said, hey, knock it off with the Justin Bieber. It's really getting to this student. So we changed it and I said, okay, we won't do Justin Bieber anymore. So we redirected him to the My Little Pony uh, website and he got to enjoy some uh, rainbow ponies for a while. I'm also an avid biker. I love to ride motorcycle. This is something I inherited from my father. Um, I do ride around all over upstate New York to participate in funerals for veterans. Um, it's a great activity. I also like to go camping on my Harley. We didn't get to do it this year, but my son, he is an avid Harley guy as well. And he just likes going with me and we just go tent camping and fishing and we just have a good old time. Let's talk about some ground rules in my classes. This applies for all my classes. Uh, read the syllabus. All the information is in the syllabus. Sometimes, especially during this COVID thing, uh, the syllabus will have to be updated on occasion. And we're going to have to roll with the punches, but every time it updates, I will post a new copy of the syllabus, and I will let you know what the changes were. There is no sign-in on this class. You do need to participate. There is some learning uh, active learning that you're missing out on if you do not participate by asking questions or talking with your classmates there will be forums available for you to do that i highly suggest you use them so that way you can get a better understanding of the material this material learning online is hard enough don't make it harder by not participating i do not accept late work i never have i never will you will get a zero for the grade however comma I will still give you feedback. It'll be brief feedback, but I will still give you feedback because feedback is important to the learning process. But I am not gonna give you a grade for doing work late when other people made sacrifices to get it in on time. It's just not fair to them, and it 
doesn't work with my timeline. I have a tight timeline. I give myself an X number of minutes to grade. Uh, you know, I give myself about 120 minutes to grade a week's worth of papers for a class. And the thing is, I don't get that time back. So if you're turning in a week later, I don't have time in my schedule to do your grading because you didn't feel like doing it the first time. Okay, so I do not take late work. I did hear from another student last uh, last year who never who didn't believe me when I said I won't take late work. And he says, well, yeah, but that's every every teacher in my high school said that and they always did. I do not. I'm telling you right now. I don't care what you learned in high school. I don't care what your other professors do. I don't take late work. That is a rule that I've never broken since I've been here and I never will. All right, cell phones, I don't like them in the classroom. You guys use them anyway, whatever. If you don't want to pay attention, then that's up to you. Academic integrity. Uh, if you cheat on assignment, I give you a zero for the assignment, and I turn you into the school. If you plagiarize, I give you an F for the assignment and turn you into the school. Uh, I give you an F for the course. Plagiarism is your attempt to deliberately pass off somebody else's work as yours. That means you are doing an active job of deceiving. This isn't an accident. Plagiarism is not an accident. That is on purpose. You trying to steal a grade you did not deserve. So I have no forgiveness for that. Don't do it. Okay. I kicked out a ton of people out of my classes with an F and they had to repeat them because of plagiarism. Don't do it. When you don't participate in the class, um, there is a very high likely rate you will fail. When we're in person, if you miss three or more classes, I don't grade on how many classes. You can miss 50. I don't care. You know, it's your dime. You're paying to be there or not. All I can tell you is that any student who does not, um, uh, who misses three or more classes in my classroom, they have a 76% chance of failing the class. They've just missed way too much material. So I'll leave that with you. Nobody who's missed more than three classes has gotten an A or B in my classes. I did think I had one student one time, um, but the thing is he just wasn't signing in. So technically he missed three classes, but really he was there every time. Uh, you do have a pretty good chance. You have an 8% chance of getting a C and a 16% chance of getting a D. But most likely, if you don't participate actively in the class, um, you are likely to get an F. So I highly encourage you in this remote learning uh, scenario that you take the classes seriously and that you do your very best and ask a lot of questions. I love answering your questions. Okay, so please ask them. So let's talk about plagiarism and cheating. Um, here's a couple of cartoons. The, the kid on the right, he says, hey, what do you mean I, I, all my facts are wrong? I copied everything off the Internet. Why are you copying somebody else's stuff? That's plagiarism. I got another guy over here. This actually happened to me is that this guy says, well, it's not plagiarism because I typed it all myself. Just because you didn't cut and paste somebody else's page or paper doesn't mean it's not plagiarism. You didn't do the work. Yes, you did the physical act of typing, but that's not what we're measuring when it comes to understanding and learning the material. You took somebody else's words and ideas and passed them off as your own. Um, that is not good. That's still plagiarism. I had uh, overheard another student uh, a couple semesters ago who was caught doing plagiarism. He wasn't one of mine. And he goes, I don't know how it can be plagiarism. You know, the, the website said when I buy the paper, it will guarantee to pass all the plagiarism tests. Um, so you bought a paper online that somebody else wrote and tried to pass it off with your name on it. That is still plagiarism. Okay? Don't do it. Do the work. Okay? Do the work. The whole point of going to college is to do the work to get the knowledge so that way you can get a decent job in the field and you can share that knowledge with others. Okay? Cheating your way around it doesn't make you any better. 
So what's the definition of cheating then? Well, I encourage people to work as a group. But working as a group is not four people sitting around a table. One person gets the answer, and then the other three write it down. That's not working as a group. Working as a group is saying, hey, John, man, uh, my code doesn't work. I think it's these four lines here. Can you help me out what's going on? I need another pair of eyes. Oh, dude, you got your counter set up wrong. Oh, thanks. Let me let me mess with that and get that, and maybe you can have another look at it. Sure. That's working as a group. Hey, I'm stuck. I need some insight from somebody else to help me out. Not, hey, what was your answer for question 12? But, you know, don't do that. You know, it, collaborate. Learn from each other, you know, and, and make it happen. You, you guys can do this. Why? Because... All your professors that you have have done this as well. The other thing I have a problem with is when students don't secure their work. That's considered cheating. What happens is I will get two papers in that are identical, okay, or they're so identical, I think it's from the same person. One of you gave your paper to the other person, and the other person took it. I have no idea knowing who it was. So the thing is, if you're not securing your work from somebody else taking it, then guess what? You're both guilty of cheating. You both get a zero on the assignment. Okay? Secure your work. Don't share your work with people. And uh, do the best you can. All right? Let's talk about grades. This is one of my things. I didn't used to talk about this, but I have put it in my introduction slides now because it happens so frequently. Um, if you look on the side here, you'll notice all these percentages from the assignments and the final grade do not add up to a 56%. If you can see, the 68 is passing, an 82 is passing, a 78 is passing, 100% is, uh, is great, and the final is an 83%. Then they go, hey, how come I got an F for the class? Well, this is what they tell their parents. This is what they tell Professor Sturdivant, and this is what they tell the dean. They go, you know, Professor Heath Van Horn is just mean. Um, I did all these great assignments, and he gives me an F anyway. But then I show up, and I show people the whole story. Now, if you look at all the zeros that happened at the beginning of the semester, of work you did not do at all, that affects your grade drastically. And that's where the 56% comes from. So if you want to complain about me being unfair, tell the whole story. But the math doesn't lie. My math is very good. You know, I, I, I do make mistakes. I've, it's happened. Students have come to me, hey, I think you graded my paper wrong. And I look at it and I go, you're right, I did. And I am happy to revisit if you think an error has occurred. Um, the thing is, I just ask you not to waste my time. I've had students try to do that too. Every assignment, oh, I think you graded it wrong. Uh, dude. You know, after about the fourth or fifth, I don't think I did. But I will look at it one more time. Um, but the idea is, is that I'm human. I make mistakes. But at the same time, if you're going to complain, complain with the right information. Because otherwise, you just look stupid. All right? Are there any questions? You can post them in the forum. You can send me an email. I answer a lot of questions about my military uh, when we're in... Uh, the classroom together, a lot of people have questions about the military or electronics or different IT fields. I am happy to answer those questions. It's awesome. Uh, questions, your unique question is your attempt to see the world the way you view it, to help explain what's going on in the world around you. And I want to help with that. So uh, feel free to ask me questions. I, I love to answer them. All right, without further ado, my name is Dr. Heath Van Horn, and I am your instructor, and this has been my introduction. Thank you.